Okay, so this is a tutorial on some of the important veins of the body. So I'm going to start at the heart and then work outwards and talk you through some of the important veins that you should know. So this is the right atrium and this is the right ventricle of the heart. And deoxygenated blood returns to the heart, to the right side of the heart, via these, via the, via the venous system. So this vessel superior to the right atrium is called the superior vena cava and below you've got the inferior vena cava. So you can see the inferior vena cava running all the way down to the pelvic region where it splits. So the superior vena cava forms from these two branches. So you can see that this, these vessels lie behind the clavicle. So this and the breastbone which I've removed here would lie anteriorly here. So the superior vena cava is formed from these two veins which drain into it and these are the brachiocephalic veins so you've got the left sorry the right and the left brachiocephalic veins. This vein which arches over here and runs underneath the clavicle is called the subclavian vein because it runs underneath the clavicle so sub under clavian referring to clavicle so you've got the subclavian vein draining into the brachiocephalic vein which joins with the other brachiocephalic vein to form the superior vena cava. And then you've got these two vessels here, these two veins, which are coming down from the brain and the head. So this one, which is more medial, is the internal jugular vein, and this one, which is more lateral, is the external jugular vein. So the internal jugular vein drains the brain, and the external jugular vein drains the head and face. So these, the external jugular vein comes and drains into the subclavian vein and where the internal jugular vein drains into becomes the brachiocephalic vein. So this, this, where it drains into the subclavian it becomes the brachiocephalic vein. So you've got the subclavian vein here running underneath the clavicle becoming the brachiocephalic vein which joins with the other side to become the superior vena cava and then you've got the jugular veins, the internal and external jugular veins. So following the veins over, we come to look at the veins which drain the upper limbs. So you can see this, this vein here, this drains into the axillary vein. So this region in the armpit region is the axillary vein, and you've got this vein, the cephalic vein, draining into the axillary vein. So where the cephalic vein joins the axillary vein, it becomes the subclavian vein. So this is the axillary vein here. Also draining into the axillary vein, you've got these two veins. So this one is the brachial vein, this middle one here, and this is a deep vein. This one here is the basilic vein, and this, where these two veins meet, you get the axillary vein. So the axillary vein runs from here to the point where the cephalic vein drains into it. So if I just put in the muscle layer, you can see what I mean by this vein being deep. So you can see this vein here is the um, deep brachial vein and you've got the two superficial veins, the basilic vein and the cephalic vein. So I'll just put the muscle layer in. So you can see that you've got the cephalic vein which runs superficially and this basilic vein which is also superficial. But the brachial vein here runs deeply. So this deep brachial vein. So just working our way down the limb, you can see this vein which joins the cephalic and the basilic veins. So this is the median cubital vein and this joins, links up the cephalic and the basilic vein. So just to put the muscular system in again to give you an idea of where these veins run, so you can see this is a superficial vein which connects the superficial cephalic and the superficial basilic veins. 
So when you're taking blood from a patient, these are often the veins you take blood from, the cephalic vein here, the median cubital vein, and this basilic vein. So just removing the muscular system again. So this is the brachial, this is the brachial vein, the vein that branches off the axillary and runs deeply. So you can see that it has two tribu tributaries. You've got the radial vein and the ulnar vein, and these are deep veins also. So they run deep under the muscle there. So the brachial vein is formed by the joining of the radial and the ulnar vein, which run on the radial side. So the radial vein runs down the radial bone, and the ulnar vein runs down the ulnar bone, hence the name. So just to quickly go over that again, you've got the subclavian vein, which has the cephalic vein, which uh, drains blood from the axillary vein. So you've got the axillary vein going into the subclavian vein, going into the brachiocephalic vein, going into the superior vena cava. Joining the axillary vein, you've got three branches. You've got the cephalic vein, which is a superficial vein, and you've got the basilic vein, which is a superficial vein. And then you've got this deep vein, which is the brachial vein. So the cephalic and the basilic veins run all the way down the arm. So you can see it running all the way down here, and they're superficial along the entire course. So the And the bas basilic vein on the medial side running all the way down, and it's superficial. The brachial vein, which runs deep, splits here, so it's formed from the radial and the ulnar veins, which are deep, and it, the radial and ulnar veins run down the respective bones, so the radial and ulnar bones, and they join to form these palmar arches. So you've, you've got a deep and a superficial palmar venous arch, which are formed by the radial and the ulnar veins. So you'll be able to see the which one's superficial if I rotate it around. So you can see this arch here, and if I rotate it around, you can see that it's closer to the surface. So it's super the superficial venous arch, and you've got the deep um, palmar arch, palmar venous arch. So if I just put in the muscle layer again, you can see this clearly the the this superficial palmar venous arch formed from the deep radial and ulnar veins and then you've got the deeper palmar venous arch here so the superficial veins which I showed you the basilic vein which runs all the way down and it winds onto the back of the hand, the dorsum of the hand, and the same happens with the cephalic vein. So this cephalic vein which comes all the way down the arm and then winds round onto the back of the hand. So you can see that they you can see their course. So the medial vein here, which is the basilic vein, and the lateral one, the cep the cephalic vein they form this dorsal venal venous plexus on the hand. So this is often a site for cannulation of patients. So that's the venous drainage of the upper limbs. Um, it's a little bit more